to continue the photograph analogy a little bit, this is, this is actually what your camera in your cell phone does when you want to take a color picture, like most of us are used to doing. So even though we sort of perceive you take a, a, a picture with your phone, uh, you get one picture back, you get one raster. It's not an analytical raster, it's one of these display rasters. You know, it's just displaying a picture for you. But it actually takes three different rasters for you. It does exactly this. It divides the visible spectrum into blue, green, and red. And so it knows, well, how much blue, green, and red light is bouncing off of all those old pixels that it takes. So even a JPEG, even though we consider it one thing, uh, you take one JPEG, it's actually three different rasters, each one that records the blue, green, and red values for every single pixel in the image. Most uh, software programs that you go into understand, though, that if you open up a, a, a JPEG or some other file like that, that you want it to be one thing, right? And then it displays you the picture that you're trying to. Sometimes... Um, so are those three different pictures, are they all separate bands? Or are the bands like something more specific than... You could, I mean, you could consider them three different bands. I mean, you know, for the, the kind of analogy that we're doing here. I don't, I don't know exactly when my phone takes a, I mean, I'm sure somebody knows, so we could look it up. When my, your phone takes a picture, exactly what wavelength it considers blue and exactly what it can, you know, we could look that up. Um, but you'll notice that some software packages treat the JPEG just exactly like, uh, like it would treat a satellite image. In ArcMap, so what you're going to find uh, in the lab is, uh, if you go into Arc Catalog to open it up, uh, you know, here's a satellite image. And then if you click on it in Arc Catalog, it's going to take you to another screen that's got a bunch of, like in the case of Landsat, seven different rasters. And you pick which one you would like to add into, uh, into your ArcMap project. You can do the same thing accidentally with JPEGs because ArcMap doesn't understand the difference. ArcMap says, oh, it's a JPEG, but it's actually got these three different uh, bands, what it thinks of as bands, because it doesn't know any different. And so sometimes if you, or some of you may have had this uh, situation as well, uh, you know, when you're downloading like an old map that's a scan, that's colored, you know, because you're going to digitize it or you're going to do something with it. Uh, if you put the, J you can put the JPEG into ArcMap, no problem. You can click on the JPEG, say add. We did geo-referencing so you can move the JPEG around and give it its spatial position in order to digitize it or whatever. Uh, but sometimes people will double click on the JPEG accidentally and then ArcMap will take them to the next page where it says, okay, do you want one, two, or three? I got three different bands here. Uh, well, if it's a JPEG, it's not an analytical kind of raster. You don't want to add just you know, the blue in a scan of a map that you made. You want to add the whole thing. But ArcMap doesn't really understand the difference because it's not really designed for, you know, for that. So it'll let you go in and add just the blue, but what it looks like, it looks like a black and white image to you. you know, it scales um, the low reflectance of blue in this particular case, if you added blue, to be uh, black, and then high reflectance of blue to be white, and it looks like a black and white image. But what you're looking at is blue reflectivity, or the amount of blue in that particular image. Uh, and I tell people, oh, no, go back and just add the entire thing. Don't try to go in here. But when you're working with actual satellite images, that may be exactly what you're interested in seeing. I want to see exactly how much reflectivity of blue I have in this particular area. So you can just add the blue raster, and then you can look at it however you want to look at it. I mean, it'll come in in black and white, so you know that the black areas are low reflectivity of blue, white areas are high reflectivity of blue, and then you can change up how it looks uh, which is the next thing I want to talk about. Because, uh, to return to this example, so how do, so it does display in color. We're used to, you know, a picture displaying in color. Well, how does it do that? Well, uh, there are two main areas in what I teach where we talk about color theory. This is one. And then another place in cartography, when we're talking about printing, we have to talk about color theory. Let's talk about how your monitor works for a moment. 
or any type of digital display. You know, when we're, you know, this monitor or the screen on our phones, some of you probably know this, but you know, your monitor is made up of a whole bunch of, you know, pixels itself, a whole bunch of little cells, right? And you're probably used to going in, if you're thinking about buying a new monitor, you know, you want size of monitor, but now they've got, uh, you know, how many pixels is it? By how many pixels is it? Is it, you know, high definition? Now we have, you know, the, the 4X high definition will probably get much more, but they're talking about the number of pixels that are actually on your display screen, right? Well, inside each one of those little cells on your computer monitor or your phone's uh, display or whatever are three little diodes, right? So if you were to zoom in and really take a look, you would see these three diodes inside. And one of them is red, one of them is blue, and one of them is green, right? Let's go over here. Um, and then your monitor uses that to mix colors. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. Oh. There we go. Um, let's take a look at ad <clears throat> additive and subtractive color theory. Most of us are probably very familiar with subtractive color theory because most of us played with finger paints as a kid. And so, you know, we mix a bunch of colors as kids. We get familiar with the primary colors when you're mixing paint. Okay, you know, I've got uh, different color paints and you get out your finger paints and then once you start playing with them, eventually they start mixing together and you start creating something brown and then probably black. Well, that's subtractive color theory. The more, uh, you know, these colors go together and then ultimately the presence of all colors when you're talking about finger paints is black, you know, and if you're in, in an art major in here and you're mixing paints and pigments and so forth. You do that using subtractive color theory. The opposite of that is additive color theory, which is used whenever you're talking about mixing light. Okay? And so that's how your monitor works. Your monitor is, you know, shooting light out of the monitor. And in order to make all the different colors that it can, it's got to mix all of those colors of light together to produce the great range of colors that it can. Now notice the difference in additive color theory. The presence of all colors in additive color theory is white, right? The absence, if you're talking about light, the, what's the absence of all light? Black, right? The presence of all colors of light is white light, okay? This is the procedure that your monitor uses to mix colors, and that's why in additive color theory, your primary colors are red, green, and blue, and that's why every single one of those little diodes inside every one of those cells in your monitor uh, has a red, green, and blue bulb. If it wants to display white in that particular little pixel, then if the red, green, and blue bulbs are all equally intense, equally bright, then you end up with white. If it's trying to display black, well, black's a little bit more complicated when you're talking about a computer monitor. But if you're trying to display red, you know, pure bright red, then the monitor for that particular pixel would turn off blue and green and just display red. If it's trying to display some kind of a mix of a color, then it knows exactly how intense red, blue, and green needs to be on that little pixel to mix the light just right so it bounces into your eyes and you perceive that mix of colors. So what does this have to do with what we're talking about here? Well, in the case of the photograph, if you have these three rasters now, and you know if this was blue, this is green, and this is red, and then we know how much reflectance is in there, and I've got three different rasters, then what you do is you do, uh, you tell the computer, or tell, you know, your computer tells your monitor, hey, this raster right here that's created from the blue band, uh, use it to control the intensity of that little blue bulb on the monitor. Use the uh, information you get from the green reflectivity band to control the green. And then take the red and make it control the red. And then, depending on what kind of intensity it's got for any particular pixel, all of those light all that light mixes together to produce that particular color and that's why you can have a nice picture of you know your friend or whatever it is you're taking a picture of because all of those pixels 
operate like this and mix all of the color together very well. If you have ever had uh, specified color by an RGB value, you know, if you do uh, any kind of graphic design uh, or you go on to take cartography with me, we're talking about doing color, you know, talking about specifying colors. You're probably familiar that one way that you can specify colors is through an RGB value, you know, and that's the red, blue, and green. Exactly how, what kind of intensity do you have of red, blue, and green? How do they mix together? And then that's the, your color specification. There are many different ways you can specify color, but that happens to be one of them. An alternative is, of course, CMYK. Uh, and CMYK is not additive color theory, it's subtractive color theory. CMYK is how your uh, printer generates colors. Your printer is having to mix pigments in order to generate colors. So it uses this other uh, method of creating color. In cartography, as it happens, that comes up quite a bit because you're doing that. It, probably most people have had the circumstance where you're doing some kind of something on your computer monitor, you have all of your colors right, and then you go to print it, and it prints wrong. The colors don't print very well. You know, it's not the colors you thought something was going to be when you printed it. Well, that's probably because you didn't calibrate your uh, monitor to your printer. And your monitor is using RGB values. Your monitor is using uh, the mixing light in order to produce color. Whereas once you go to print your map, well, your computer has to turn all of those light values into how to mix pigment and then it comes out on your printer and if it doesn't, if it's not calibrated well, you end up with different, that's why you end up with a different look. Mm -hmm.